Welcome to the final episode of the 3D Avatar Builder tutorial with 3JS and React. In this video, we'll be adding a blooming post-processing effect, creating smooth loading animations, and optimizing our GLB model for download. Let's start by adding a nice blooming effect. We have that model that is ready for it. The eyes and mouse are emissive. We will add the blooming post-processing effect. To do it, we will use the React post-processing library. We can copy the install name in the terminal run yarn add and react 3 post processing once finished yarn dev and we can hide in the terminal then let's go to our app and below at the bottom of our canva we can add the effect composer be sure that is the one from react 3 post processing and inside we will just add the bloom effect out of the box you can see it's starting to bloom a little bit but we can adjust the props to have a better effect on bloom Use Mipmap Blur to True, Luminance Threshold to 1.2, and the Intensity to 1.2. So the threshold is when it will start to bloom, and the intensity, how much it will bloom. And now the effect is way better. Feel free to dive into the documentation, look at the different effects, and enhance your character creator experience. But be careful that too many effects would affect the performance. Let's enhance the experience, first on mobile, if we try it, we have all the items going to the next line, which leads to no space at all to visualize what we are editing. Instead, to make it scrollable, we go to UI, we search for flex wrap, which is where we accept that items are going to the next line, and instead we make it scroll overflow X auto. This is better, but the items are compressed in the size of their container. To avoid that to happen and to respect our width, we use flex, shrink, and zero. So here is the button to remove an asset. And the other one is here, when we map through all assets. And now we can see we are able to scroll the list nicely on mobile and still see what we are editing. Another thing that requires enhancement is if we reload, we have a white screen, then things appear, but it's not the best experience. Let's add a loading screen. So let's go on the UI. Here is our main container, and we can add a black screen on top of it. But first, we need to know if we are loading or not. So inside our store, we can add a variable that we will name loading by default it's true because we didn't fetch the data and when we fetch all the categories after it we can say okay we are done loading we set it to false now inside our ui component we'll have access to loading from our store inside our main component that is full screen and on top of everything we add a black div that will be on top of that, taking the whole space available. So basically, you will have a black screen. And then we'll add some transition on the opacity with a duration of one second to be able to have a smooth fade out. And conditionally, if we are loading, the opacity will be set to one. If not, it will be to zero. Currently, it's only a black screen, but inside we can add our logo and use the animate pulse, which is a CSS animation from Tailwind. Let's try it. We can reload. We have the black screen with our logo and pulse, and then it disappears to show the character. This is better, but the character, it really pops in front of us. If we look, boom, it appears. What we will want to do is to move the camera from far away to our character. To do this, we can go to our camera manager, and we'll add a new position for the camera once it's loading, we'll name it start camera position and we'll put it very far away. Let's say 500, 10 and 1000. Then the transition will make the job. Now we can get the loading, we'll name it initial loading, but it's the variable loading from the store. And in our use effect, we need to detect initial lo loading changes. And if it is in the initial loading, then we will do something, else we do what we did initially. But here in that case, we will go, oh, it's not the right one to copy. Easier done with this one. 
we'll use the start camera position, the target, we can keep it, and we don't want a transition. We want to put our camera very far. And once loaded, it will go either to the first one or the second one with the nice transition. Let's try it. We can reload. And now our camera is going smoothly toward our avatar. This is good for the initial loading, but this is not the best when we change the assets. Currently, they are loaded into my disk, but not this one. So you see, it's doing some network stuff and we had an empty phase for a few milliseconds. When this happened, we want to make a better loading experience. What we will want to do is to put our avatar on top of a teleporter base and add some nice effect around. Let's download that nice model from Quaternius. Click on download and download GLB. Thanks to him, we don't have to give credits, but don't forget to say thank you. Inside our models, in public models, simply drag and drop the model. Here it is in the preview. Let's use it in our experience. So we go next to the avatar and we will add our GLB file. Because we won't do any process on it, we can just use the GLTF component with the position below our avatar using the teleporter base model as the source, and we cast and receive shadow. The GLTF component is from dry library. We can see it's correctly below the avatar, but the floor is too high now. Let's find the plane and set the position Y to the same that our teleporter base. And nice, our avatar is on top of that. First, we want to do that when we change the asset, if it is loading, then our avatar will scale down and be floating on top of the base. If you have some cache on the asset, just reloading won't be enough because it will read it from your disk. So if you change again, it will be direct. What you can do is open the inspector and do empty cache and hard reload. So you need to long press it and empty cache and hard reload. It ensures it will load the asset from the network and not from your disk. So it's taking longer. To make our avatar float, we will wrap it inside a float component with a float intensity of one if it's loading or zero if it's not, and a speed of six if it's loading and zero if it's not and float is also coming from dry library. But here, the loading, we don't want to use the loading state of the initial loading, but more when an asset change. To detect it, we will create a state, loading, set loading, that will be equal to use state of active. And active is from use progress hook to know if something is currently loading an asset on the network. So it will set loading to true or false. And in a use effect, if active change, we will change set loading to active. We'll make it better after by adding a minimum duration and so on. But first, let's start with it. So if we change the asset while it's loading, you can see it's floating and then it's at the right position. This is nice, but we want to make it more dynamic. What we can do is scale down our avatar and also to make it slightly float on top. To have animated value, we will use React Spring library. In React Refiber documentation, you have a section dedicated to this. We need to install the library. Yarn add at React Spring slash three, and then yarn dev and hide the terminal. And how to use it? We need to import use Spring and animated. Use Spring allow us to have animated values, so the scale will be bigger and smaller, and the hook will make a nice transition between those values. And to use those values, on the mesh, we will need before to add animated dot to be able to use those Spring values. In our case, we want to animate three things, the scale, the spin to make it turn while it's loading, and the float height to push it a bit on top. So with your spring, the scale based on the loading, the spin for turn, and the float height a bit on top. Don't forget to do the import, and our avatar will wrap it inside an animated group with the scale, the position Y with the float height, and the rotation Y with our spin. For a reason I don't know, the auto import is not working. So you can just go on top, next to your spring, animated. 
It won't work out of the box. You can see cannot call the manual advancement of wraps. This is a bug on the version we are using of React Spring 3. It's not a bug, it's a conflict. If we go to our yarn log to see what is installed, if we search for React Spring, we can see we have two versions, the 9.6.1, which is not the one we installed, but it is the one installed from dry library. So if we search more, we can see both of them. Because we don't control what dry is using, we can just use the same that they are using, 9.6.1. We need to be sure that we reinstall the libraries running yarn once done yarn dev and it should be better let's try it if we change the outfit with one we didn't have you will see the nice effect it's better but we want that when it's happening we add some sort of laser light blue wimming light like the idea you can have of a teleporter to do this let's create a new component that we will name loading avatar.jsx we want to make it animated, so be sure that you add animated and use spring. And we create our component. The parameter it will use is the loading, the one that we can pass from a prop from the experience. And inside, we will return an animated group and we will animate its position Y. Inside, it will contain three meshes. A main cylinder going from the bottom to the top of our avatar with a transparent orange material, very transparent, to see our avatar inside. Then another mesh on top of it that will be a smaller cylinder on the height but larger. And this one won't be very transparent but the emissive will be strong so we'll have a nice blooming effect. And we do the same on the base, on the bottom. Now with Uspring, we can animate on the position Y. So when it's loading, it's at zero, so we can see it. And if not, it will go below the ground. Because I saved before having Uspring used, it automatically deleted the import. So I will import it back and we need to export our component. Just to force the view of it, we can set loading to true. It's not a good practice, but we will remove it very quickly. And in our experience, let's import it. So right after our GLTF, loading avatar with loading is equal to loading. Here is what we have. You can see it's going over our avatar. But it's not an issue because when it's loading, we scale down our avatar. But you can see the nice blooming effect and the transparency effect. Let's try it in real condition. We remove the loading true. Let's try it on an asset we didn't load. We have the nice effect and once done, it disappears. But if we load an asset we already have, you can see the transition had started. And if it's reading from disk, it will just take a few milliseconds. We don't want to animate, but just to transition smoothly. To avoid this glitch, we go to experience and we will change the way we set loading to true. First, we need a variable to know when we set loading at. It will help us to set a minimum time to display the transition. Let's adjust the logic. So we create a timeout to delay actions. First, if it's active, we'll set a timeout to set loading to true and to set loading at to the current time with a timeout of 50 milliseconds. So if it's below, we won't show the loader. We just want the transition to happen. If it's not active, in that case, we will set a timeout to set it to false to a minimum of two seconds. So if we show the spinner, then it will stop it after two seconds. But if it lasted already one second, we don't want to display it three seconds. So we decrease the two seconds by when we started the animation of the loading. That way, if it lasted one second, it will be two seconds minus one second. So it will just wait the remaining one second. And then we don't forget to return a clear timeout. So if the value change, it will cancel the previous timeout that didn't execute. Let's reload and try it. If I show it now, you can see we had a nice transition. It was pretty quick reading from the disk. But if we try assets we didn't load with the reload, you can see we have the nice animation and it lasted at least two seconds. Once you are happy with your avatar, you might want to download it. We already have the logic to download it, but currently the file size can be a bit too much heavy. It's fine, but we can do better. Let's try to go below that 2.9 megabyte. 
If you watch my video about optimization, you might know GLTF Transform. If not, I recommend you to watch it. It's a tool to perform optimization on GLTF files, such as optimizing texture or just performing compression and optimization on the mesh itself. In the video, we're using the client, but here we can use the scripting API to change our GLTF directly inside our code. Very useful for our use case or if you are doing some automation on models. First, let's install it. Copy the package names and yarn add paste them. Once installed, run yarn dev and we should be good. To use it, they have an example, but let's start from the beginning with node.io. This is where you read and write the file. So you have two methods, one to read the model, so on a disk, or in our case, we already have a buffer to our model. So we will need to read binary. Let's try to do it. Go to avatar where we have our download function. And instead of calling save directly with our buffer, we will perform some operation on the result, which is the buffer of the GLTF exporter. First, we need node.io. We import it from the core. Then we do the read of the binary but it is a wait, so we need to transform our function to an async function. Then on our document, we'll be able to perform a bunch of operations. But first, let's try to write the file to see if the process is ready. And instead of downloading the result from GLTF exporter, we will try to save with the GLB buffer we just created. Let's try to download this one and it's downloading it correctly. The file size is lower, but I guess it's because it's a different one, not because we performed operations. Then you can check the documentation to see all the different operations we can do to reduce the file size and to optimize our GLB file. Here they are doing resample, prune, dead up. They are also enhancing the textures. So let's try a few. We run await document.transform and then prune, dead up, draco, and quantize. Don't forget to do the import. Each one are from GLTF transform functions. Import all of them. Of course, you can add more or less optimizations. Let's try to download the asset. And this time, even if we were using the rabbit, you can see that the file size is only 1.2 megabyte, while the rabbit is quite heavy. You can now use your avatars on your projects. Thank you for watching. This was the final part of the Avatar Builder tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to hit the like button to help the channel grow and be more visible to other creative developers. Next week, I will publish the long form video, including all the previous parts, with an additional one to see how to use our avatar in my existing tutorial projects. A good reason to subscribe and hit the bell button. If you want to continue your 3D web development learning journey, I recommend you watch this video video available here.